um, it's great to see that TEDx SOAS has stayed true to the old adage that what we want after a long day of masticating academia is 15 minutes of sex. <laughs> and I got 15 minutes of sex. So you're going to look at me here. Okay, so what would I do? I sit in a darkened room, I chain smoke, I watch Thai pornography, and I take notes. It's as every bit as glamorous as it sounds, yes. <laughs> but but the, the important thing is for me is that Thai pornography, Asian pornography particularly, um, specific, Asian pornography generally, but Thai pornography specifically, has grown hugely in the last few years, especially in the last decade, and especially in parallel with tourism going over to Thailand, Western tourism. What disturbs me about when people talk about porn, and the discussions about porn in the past few decades have often come from feminists who have hijacked this, and they often look to it in a very negative way. In my work, I'm very specific not to put any moral or ethical imperatives on my work. I have no feelings either or on the moral ideas of it. But what I think we do need to know is we need to know what porn people are consuming, and what, what that porn means, and then how does that translate into sexual interactions with the other and non-sexual interactions with the other. So for example, I'm going to um, talk very quickly through a, a company called um, Third World Media, oh. <laughs> which is a, which is a porn company who apparently improved their name because their name before was Asian Eyes Porn. <laughs> so it's a Third World Media apparently, so it's a bit better. Um, it starts off in Japan. Um, making Japanese porn. They moved down to Thailand, <laughs> across them, track them across the globe. They moved down to Thailand and they also do some um, stuff in Brazil as well. What's particularly interesting about the content is it's so atypical. It's, uh, it's so, it, it's so, it's so typical, not atypical, it's so typical of the stuff that's out there. So it's a great case example. So they have straight porn, they have gay porn, they have tranny porn, um, they have a large DVD selection in all around the world. In the West, in America they sell these DVDs, in Soho they sell these DVDs. They have a large online pay-as-you-watch presence, which is where you, you pay per minute every minute you watch. If that's not an imperative to get faster, <laughs> But that's what they have. <laughs> pay, pay per minute. Um, and ostensibly, and I still have some things. A lot of stuff has been uploaded illegally onto online um, APS peer networks and things like Spankwire and YouTube, etc., etc., and just the websites. Obsensibly, because there's a lot of research done that suggests that these companies are posting stuff on them themselves to gain interest, and they get oh, someone stolen our material, etc., etc. But the point, the point that I'm making is that these DVDs and the images in these DVDs have a huge circulation. And have a circulation in, in many different spatial areas that all circulate. So, um, as I said, I look specifically at Thai porn. So, so, what comes up over and over and over again in, in their Thai collection, whether straight, gay, or tranny? I got, I got to trouble by not putting the quotes from tranny before, so I always make sure I do that. They, um, okay, so it's almost always a white male who's travelled to this exotic land. <laughs> and so, so some of the tropes, or in, in virtual prison in every single one, the Asian body is always penetrated. Whether it's the female, the male, or the transgender body, is always penetrated. The white male always ejaculates onto the Asian body. Um, something that's particularly interesting that I find is that there's always a version of echolalia. The white person often says to the Thai body, the Thai person, say something like, fuck me, and they'll wait. Often the Thai person will understand this, and they'll wait and they'll say, say, fuck me, I want you to fuck me. And then when the Thai person repeats it, of course what's particularly interesting here is we repeat it back to the white person and back to the camera. It is the white person giving the desire to the Thai person in order for the white person to tear it back. It's a justification that the, white, that the Asian body wants to be penetrated, wants to be subjugated. So what's particularly interesting about um, these DVDs, as I say, is that there's a circulation. And well, I'm particularly interested in, in the circulation of these ideas and how they're spreading across. Because what has now started happening, this is very, very, very new, maybe in the last few years, 
is what we call Porn 2.0. I'm seeing a lot of people have Web 2.0, which is our ability to interact with the internet. Wikipedia is a great example. We can add, we can take things, we can change things. <coughs> a lot of websites now um, allow you to upload your own films of you having sex. And what's particularly interesting in the last few years is that people have, white people, have used their socioeconomic power in order to travel, to fly to Thailand. They view pornography, Thai pornography in the West, and they've gone over to Thailand, they're going to, to sex workers, to prostitutes, male, female, transgender, they're having sex with them, but for the first time they're filming it, and they're putting it back on the internet. And this circulation is going round and round and round. And so, of course, again, someone in London will watch somebody else re uh, re reiterating the ideas that they've seen in porn. And it goes round and round and round. Another particularly fascinating um, facet of this that, again, needs more research, and this is what I intend to do in the next, following, the next few following years, is I was with my Thai friends, my uh, gay Thai friends, in a city called Pit San Lot in Thailand. And I said, well, what porn do you watch? There's, there's, there's no research on what pornography Thai people watch. Pornography is illegal in Thailand, but boy, is it present, you know. Um, I, said, I said, what do you watch, these, these gay friends? And, I, and they said, Western porn. And I said, why? They said, because all white guys have big cocks. <laughs> Which, well, that's interesting, because they, again, have formed a knowledge of the other body from pornography. And they had reiterated it, and this had gone around, and they'd circulated pornography, because pornography is actually fairly difficult to get in Thailand if, if you're not you're in a rich city. And they'd got these ideas. I went to a, a talk, uh, I gave a talk at another um, university, who I won't name, <coughs> Royal Holloway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they didn't know me there, and I was, I was wandering around at the start, uh, kind of eavesdropping, <laughs> the two guys talking. And um, one guy, comp uh, kind of slightly worried, said, what are they? I don't think what, what they ask is what type of porn we watch. And the other person said, ah, I haven't watched porn in a week. So I can honestly say when they ask me, I haven't watched porn in a week. <laughs> because he was scared that he would have to tell people what porn he consumed. Whereas people are scared of this. In Thailand and in the West. It's one of the hardest things about doing research on porn, is that people simply won't talk to you. And why is this? When we watch a film we like, when we watch a TV show, a documentary, a, a band that we like, we tell people. There's something about pornography that troubles us when, when we share it. And this becomes even worse when it's a niche pornography, especially Asian pornography. Now, if we leave that to one side and we say, well, people have trouble talking about like, the type of pornography that they watch and the niche pornography, What's really interesting is people that go to Thailand, have many of you been to Thailand? Mm -hmm. so. um, and even if you haven't, you know what happens in Thailand. I, I simply need to mention ping pong balls. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and, and you know. And what's really interesting, of course, is again, 10 years ago, it might be a bit of a guilty secret that people have gone to see the ping pong show. Um, now it's, it's a thing to do. Women are going. Women in huge numbers are now going to the ping pong shop. It stopped becoming about sexual subjugation because it's simply become a cultural thing to do on our travels. We've removed the sex from it. And again, but, but what people don't realize is that it's part of the circulation of our idea of the Thai sexual body, but they don't accept that. When you try to tell people that actually going to watch a ping pong show is actually pretty horrific. It's subjugation. It's you know, it's, prostitu it's, it, it's prostitution, you know, however we like to dress it. People refuse to believe that. Another thing that comes up when, <laughs> obviously I spend a lot of time trawling the net for, for Thai porn, much to the uh, annoyance of my flatmates who have to deal with the, the sounds coming from my room, <laughs> um, is that a lot of people obviously write behind anonymity, behind pseudonyms, of their adventures in Thailand. And a lot of these porn DVDs that I spoke about at the start also contain blurbs about, about what's in the film. And what's really interesting is a lot of these writings have very 
similar kind of styles of linguistic usage as colonial texts. How we talked about the, the, the other body in colonial texts. And that's really interesting. We've gone full circle. China was never colonized officially. But, but this is interesting that we picked a country that was never colonized and now it's a center of sex tourism. We reiterate these ideas round and round and round, but we don't accept that e even when we laugh at the idea of the ping pong show, we don't accept that that's laughing at contextual subjugation. It, it's really interesting. As I say, I take no moral stance on this, but, um, and, and I'll, I'll wrap up now, but, but Dennis O'Rourke, he's a, a filmmaker, he made a documentary about a, a documentary called The Good Woman of Bangkok, about a, a prostitute in Thailand back in 1990. Um, <laughs> horrific documentary. Feminist attacked and really tore it apart, really tore the film apart. And he said, in this kind of typical Australian forthright manner, he said the penis doesn't have a fucking memory of the Vietnamese War. And that's really interesting. Because, well, I don't know if it does or not. But we certainly know that our interactions with the Thai body certainly isn't the same in Thailand, often as a white male, certainly isn't the same as our interactions with other white people on the streets of London. I put that down to the circulation of this Thai pornography and the, the circulation of ideas and the sexualized Thai. And a lot of research needs to be done on this. Um, so perhaps the penis doesn't have a memory, but I think we do. I think we know what we're doing in Thailand but we're simply not admitting to it. We're simply not admitting that our penis is actually an extension to our brain, and we do need to link the two in order to fully appreciate the encounters that we have. So, um, final word, because I know it's late and that you all want to go home. After 15 minutes of talking about sex, I normally like a cigarette, so thank you. <laughs>